What's going on, Digital Wildcatters? Welcome to another week of Oil & Gas Startups Podcast. I know Jake usually takes care of the intro, but kicked him out of this podcast. He doesn't even know that he's kicked out. We're supposed <laughs> to record this at 1 o'clock. You guys showed up 30 minutes early. I was like, hell, let's just let's do it without him. We're very so, prompt. Cutting him out. Yeah, yeah cut him out. out. Yeah, he's been replaced. Even though so. he told you you'd do great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so today on the show, we got uh, Energy Funders with my friend Laura and Jeff. That's you right. guys just got in from Austin. Austin, right? Austin, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What, what was happening in Austin? I heard some Bitcoin talk. Is that? Yeah, yeah. Um, we were going to go out for the blockchain council meeting, but it's just, that's, I don't know. <laughs> this is going to sound terrible. I don't need a nap today. I'm, yeah. I'm good. I'm well rested. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just kidding. Of- but like, that's a lot. That's like really in depth detail that I don't really like yeah. need to be a part of right now. I yeah. love the regulatory element of it. All the discussions were really interesting. We went out to meet some investors and hang out and, um, we're supposed to meet someone fairly famous, but he uh, got stuck in D.C., which was unfortunate. But yeah. met the whole like a group of people who were around him, and cool. hopefully we'll have some ability to advise on the future of Bitcoin mining on natural gas. It was nice yeah. to know and meet the people that are working on policy and see the problems that are coming mm-hmm. a year or a few years ahead of us yeah, and know great. what their perspective is and that it aligns with ours. And mm-hmm. um, that was really cool because yeah. we work on energy funders. We don't work on policy. So all yeah. the, it's in the – you know the the background. It was nice to be up front and center and know what people are um, hoping to yeah. achieve. Yeah, and well, they're on our side. Happen. Yeah, yeah, they're, yeah, they're on our side. And yeah. some of, the, I mean, some of the other Bitcoin mine operators were there, and so hearing, you know, we're about to kick off our first mine, and so hearing some of the guys what they've been experiencing, some of the technical difficulties is, you know, eyes wide open for us is really important. So we're prepared and staffing wise prepared and all that kind of stuff. So cool. It was cool. Our investors yeah. are great over there. We love everybody and. Um, yeah, it was fun. I don't, it's always, always fun to go to Austin. Yeah. yeah Austin. You know, he's getting in some trouble in Austin. Well, with Laura, it yeah. doesn't matter where you are. In, you're getting in trouble. We were just in New Mexico. We were <laughs> just in New Mexico. That. Uh, we spoke at Namoga. Yeah. And it's great. Had, you know, met a ton of you know, representatives. There, it's nice. Congressmen yeah, it's there really and, good to do that. You know, same thing. It's like, I just started kind of talking to those types and hearing, you know, how they think about policy and how that shaped. Mm-hmm. But, uh, I was really surprised. It's my first time to Santa Fe. And oh, that I town love Santa Fe. So sleepy though. Oh, I was, was like, it? Yeah. In the fall? I couldn't get in any trouble. I was like, oh. everything, <laughs> even if I wanted to go eat, everything closed at nine o'clock. And so, um, anyways, I was surprised by that. Well, but like Austin's Jeff said, like, take me next time. I'll find yeah, trouble. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or I'll get us into some trouble. I'll so find trouble. I always let's do. Let's talk about what digital wildcat or digital wildcatters, energy That's funders. You. We know what digital wildcatters <laughs> is, what energy funders is. Um, really interesting story here because i've known the mm-hmm. energy funders story you know since the early days yeah. um you know several years back so why don't you give all the listeners a high level overview of what you guys actually do yeah yeah that'd be great um so energy funders is the first ever digital platform for investing in oil and gas wells we try to democratize investing in oil and gas and now Bitcoin mines as well, because it's an asset class that has traditionally never been approachable to kind of your everyday investor, you know, it's kind of locked out of it. So from what I understand from initial, the initial founding of it, which you can help elaborate on, um, it was founded based on the concept um, established by other companies such as like Realty Mogul and Cadre, all those guys who have real estate as something that your regular accredited investor could invest in. Mm -hmm. And so the guys who started it said, what's another asset class that's traditionally been sort of locked up? And they thought, well, oil and gas is perfect. Mm -hmm. So it truly is. And so our whole aim is to make it so that anybody can invest in the superior economics that you can get from a good will. So that's sort of the pitch. Yeah. I'm going to put you on the hot seat with some questions just because I think I've... I'm definitely in the top percentile of people that have thought about fractionalizing oil yep. and gas mm-hmm. assets. So yeah. um, there's, you know, you, you make the comparisons like Cadre or mm-hmm. Yield Street mm-hmm. or, you know, these um, commercial real estate or even residential real estate mm-hmm. um, yeah. companies. And, you know, it's like I've I've torn apart all the documents for all of those companies to understand sure. what their business models are. And one thing that was um, beneficial to the commercial real estate industry was that your net asset value typically stayed yeah you don't get you know, depreciation very, yeah, <laughs> yeah yeah you know within oil and gas you can have so much variance especially over the mm-hmm. last year and a half with pricing yeah. and it changes the uh it changes the price deck right and so mm-hmm. the value of the asset can change within a month mm-hmm. and so that's what i was always jealous you know about commercial real estate like you guys don't have to deal with this someone tells you it's a yeah. hundred million dollar building it's a hundred million dollar building 
And so there's definitely some challenges with, um, you know, fractionalizing oil and gas assets. I don't think it's anything that can't be, you know, I, I think mm-hmm. there's always solutions to problems. You just mm-hmm. have right. to put some brain power into it and figure it out. But let's talk about, you know, Laura, when did you come on to Energy Funders? About a year ago? Yeah, no, actually, I started, uh, I think, formally May 1st or maybe mid-April. Okay. Yeah, very recently. Okay, so Mm -hmm. about six months in. Yep, six months. Yeah, let's Mm -hmm. talk about, one, let's talk about y'all's backgrounds real quick. Mm -hmm. um, Because you have a really interesting background. Mm -hmm. And then, Jeff, uh, you're currently helping BD efforts for Energy Funders, right? And then Mm -hmm. Laura, CEO. Correct. Um, Laura, let's start with you. Let's talk about your background um, because I think you have an interesting one. Yeah, it certainly is interesting. Actually, uh, I was recently asked to join my graduate department's friends and alumni network specifically to help geoscience students figure out how to pivot away from geology, which is interesting because I guess technically that's something that I've done now. So, yeah, but that's, it's, it's kind of cool. I mean, we should dive into that a little bit yeah, because you know, I talk there. to a lot of students at universities too. And mm-hmm. it's like, you know, with geological based students, I think that's, yeah, it's tricky. Right. Yeah. And a lot of smart kids that have great potential, but it's like, Hey, I, I was actually thinking about this while I was in New Mexico because it's like, what would geologists do if it wasn't for oil and gas? Yeah, I mean, right? environmental, you know? yeah. USGS, right. that's it. Yeah, like that's there's it. just not many career paths. And so mm-hmm. traditionally, yeah. Now yeah. it's getting a lot better. What I recommend and what, you know, I'm speaking to some of these students later on this fall at UT. My recommendation to the department is you need to ensure that these students are taking finance classes, they need to take programming classes, they need to take um, other science classes. Um, and typically, I think an engineering class or two doesn't hurt because ultimately the, the things that I lacked when I came out of my graduate program were basic un, a basic understanding of finance and engineering, mm-hmm. right? And one of those things is you get into, for example, I was at Anadarko for a long time, so I got some on the job training, but, you know, realistically at those big companies, they kind of put you, you know, baby stays in the corner. They don't let geologists do anything because we're so weird. <laughs> and the normal Just track. Bunch of rock collectors keep them in the basement. Yes, no, that's exactly right. So my former business partner always joked about it, Justin Ballard, who runs a Bitcoin mining company yeah. up in Wyoming now. So he always joked about like, Laura, you're the only geologist who I've ever known who like they let out. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, well, there is a reason. I am yeah. I like to talk. Yeah. <laughs> and I do understand things. So yeah. well the normal track for geologists or geoscientists or other sp- specialized scientists even engineers was okay well i've reached the limit or i see the limit Mm -hmm. i have to go get an mba and that'll excel my career so i mean geology when i was graduating in 09 there were still a lot of jobs in oil and gas Mm -hmm. yeah that was still the the focus if you have a geology degree or geoscience degree you're not going environmental that was kind of new that was starting Mm -hmm. out i had one job offer for an environmental job it was terrible and now you might see an oil and gas job but you're definitely going to see environmental jobs but that's still to, for those geoscientists like when i talk to students mm-hmm. you're going to have to pivot in some direction and taking as many classes as possible yeah. is good geologists or you know a swiss army knife anyway we, exactly we have to know all the different disciplines and mm-hmm. science and er- because that makes up the earth but yeah you have to go with that next further step and mm-hmm. think yeah. about your career and some people are, are fine you know just staying locked away mm-hmm. as you said mm-hmm. yeah but there are very few jobs are just pure geology yeah, yeah you know? for yeah. sure yeah we we mm-hmm. should actually maybe put together something sometime for mm-hmm. students oh, yeah, uh, I'd be in happy the to discipline. Help. We're actually holding a hackathon up here next month. Awesome. That's it's gonna be like a hundred to hundred and fifty uh geophysicists and they're working on a geothermal data cool. set. And so there's that's still cool. like you know, there's a lot of smart young talent in that discipline. Yeah. And you know, they're learning these when, uh, when is that gonna uh, it's next uh month? it's gonna be November um shit, I can't remember the date. I mm-hmm. think um I think the twelfth. I'll have to. I'll have to look. Okay. We haven't okay. announced it yet. So sweet. Oh well, dang. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Preview. If you're listening to this. Here's a, here's a preview <laughs> to it. That's but, really cool. I'm glad that you're doing that. Yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. It's gonna yeah. be. It's gonna be fun. So we're doing it in this big room over here. We're gonna deck it out with some furniture and make, that's it, fun. make it look good. But yeah. So that's a mm-hmm. uh, you know a little side tangent there. But I'm sure we could talk about that a lot. But you were at Anadarko yeah, for a so long time, and then let went me off. start from the beginning. Yeah. Because I think that sort of frames a lot of like why I got where I am. I'm actually from Boulder, Colorado, mm-hmm. one of the most liberal places in the yeah. country. And so you know, growing up, 
my grandfather was a doctor. My grandmother was a nurse. Like we were outside all the time. My uncle's a geologist, so that helped a lot. Um, and so I just kind of got used to loving nature and being outside. And then when I went to college, I was actually pre-med and geology. And my uncle said, why don't you just take a geology class? I think you'd really like it. You know, you get to hike around. He totally lied to me. <laughs> you only get to hike around during college. During college, <laughs> going out on field After trips. that, yeah. you get the ball and chain and you're done. Yep. <laughs> so, but anyway, I started at uh, CU Boulder for my geology degree and it was wonderful. It was a really good opportunity. And then started getting internships even as an undergrad in, at little oil and gas companies, um, including Whiting and then one called Bahamas Petroleum, which was super cool and weird. Got to describe some Bahamian core. That was cool. Um, and then from there, I went to work immediately at what was Williams Production Company, um, working in the peon space and doing operations geology. So steering wells, all that kind of fun stuff, planning wells. I didn't like it. When I started, it was we were running 21 rigs, and so it was crazy. And that was fall of 2000 shit 2008 i think mm -hmm. and then by winter of 2008 we were running four rigs so we went from 20 to four and then i got really bored because you know then there were too many geologists and all the experienced geos were doing all the ops so i was mm. kind of stuck doing bitch work for lack of better word yeah and thought you know this is not for me so i decided to go back and get my master's degree <clears throat> i traveled for six months between those two things i did like a little round the world thing which was easily the best thing i've ever done in my life yeah highly recommend doing that like Awareness of other cultures, different places, I think is hugely yeah, important. Yeah, up your mind. Right, so exactly. Much, yeah. And so you're more interested in a lot more different things, history, mm -hmm. culture, yeah. you know, food and drink, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So anyway, then I got into CSM and UT while I was abroad. I was sitting on a beach in Thailand and I got my admittance letters and I was like, well, I lived in Colorado for 26 years. I think I need to go. I got to move. <laughs> I, I regret it every day. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, now I'm a Texan. It's okay. You got to be a Texan. Yeah, now, now I'm yeah. a Texan. <laughs> I love this place. So ended up showing up at UT Austin. Sight unseen. I don't, I don't I, they like your type in Boulder anymore. They don't like me. one. Oh, no, they don't. Yeah. No, it's great. I love it. It's actually an amazing opportunity for me to speak for the industry. Yeah. That's something interesting that I always think about. So I get invited to all these events that my friends throw and weddings and all this stuff. I go back all the time. Yeah. And a lot of people, some people are very rude about it and won't even speak to me. Mm -hmm. They call me a fracker, which I think is hilarious. Fracker. Like that doesn't, no. I don't, no, no, no. Okay, cool. And then other people no, are very. <laughs> we don't call anyone a fracker. Yeah. Like, what do you are? What, what do you do? What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> yes. And then the rest of the people are really interested in sort of um kind of what i have to say about it because it's really statistics you know yeah. ultimately you're talking about statistical probability when you're talking about you know um accidents and all that kind of stuff yeah and if you can break it down into bite-sized chunks people have a little easier time understanding what you're talking yeah. about so i view it as more of an opportunity than yeah. kind of like they they may hate me i don't yeah. care but now i, mean, I have an I, opportunity i understand to that because i have a friend that moved to austin recently from yeah. new york Mm -hmm. and he'll host these parties and yeah. everyone at the parties has either moved to austin from mm -hmm. la or new uh -huh. york and so he'll invite me because like yes, i'm the, I'm the one guy he knows in oil and gas and you know him and i have a re really good relationship but he's so funny he's like he'll do these icebreakers he's like colin's like he's like the guy in oil like he was on a rig like throwing <laughs> chains and so like he'll he set it with that, all, like, his all these people like <laughs> like it's like i'm like an alien to them yeah. i like, never like, met someone real? in oil and yeah. gas yeah. right yeah. Yeah. And it's an opportunity for mm -hmm. me to like show him and like talk to him about oil We're and be like, oh, like people. this is just a normal dude. He's not a big bad Exxon, yeah. you know, fucking up the planet. Exactly. Right. Just a guy that loves the yeah. energy. And so I, yeah. I love those opportunities. Yeah, no, I think it's really important. I think it's important for us to feel confident um, and educated enough to speak when we are asked. Like, mm -hmm. I think oil and gas has a huge PR problem. I always have thought this. I always thought like in a future life, I'd be maybe like a lobbyist or like try and help us and be like, oh, look, we're actually good. But yeah. I mean, that's the fact. We are actually good. Yeah. We're contributing yeah. something to society that everybody needs every day. Yeah. That doesn't mean that I don't think that infrastructure needs to be built out for a more diverse energy environment. Mm -hmm. However, I do think that oil and gas is our bridge. Yeah. It's going to be around forever. So we might as well take advantage well, of it. That's what I told can. everyone at the Namoga talk. I said, yeah. Yeah. you know, we talk a lot about an energy transition, but right now it's not a transition. It's an energy addition. I said, exactly. demand right. keeps scaling up. I mean, we're adding wind and solar, you know, mm -hmm. capacity to the energy mix, but right. it's not displacing 
like, not we're not even, any. We're not even displacing coal. Yeah, it's exactly. Like, coal, it's coal, coal use is up. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. so yeah, that's why, you know, part. for me, natural gas is the, it's it. It is mm-hmm. the it. transition fuel. Hey, that can immediately displace coal. Yeah. And then you can start adding base load capacity through solar and yeah. wind. Yeah. I but mean, there's it, a movie you should watch. It's called Switch. And okay. Scott Tinker did it. He's based out of the BEG. He used to be the, I think, president of AAPG. He's a geologist as well. Um, it's a very, very good movie. And it's about basically, it's kind of like, this is going to be a really girly thing for me to say, but there's that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, whatever. <laughs> you know that book, like The French Girl Diet? I don't. Okay, so there's this book. <laughs> <laughs> Can't say I'm familiar with it. <laughs> God damn it. Okay. So there's this book called The French Girl Diet, and it's all about like French people just eat a little bit of everything. No, I, I they fucking, don't gorge I've themselves. Been, I've been to France once on and croissants. I hate it. I was like, y'all fucking drink wine, eat croissants, smoke and cigarettes. smoke. That's and all smoke. y'all do. Yeah. And then pee and in I was the like, streets. I, I hated yeah. it because I was starving the whole time. Yes, exactly. So the French Girl Diet is just eat a diversified diet, right? Yeah. That's effectively what this film is about. It's like, if everybody decreases their own personal consumption, which of course we can't rely on people in third world countries to be doing because mm-hmm. that's not really yeah. fair, right? Yeah. But if we can reduce our own personal consumption and we can diversify the energy sources that we're pulling from, things will get better. But like you said, it's all about transitioning to that. Mm-hmm. So anyway. That's interesting. I'll have to, I'll have yeah, to check it's, it out. It's very good. They just started a foundation too. Maybe so. I'll pick up the French girl diet too and see. No, nah, <laughs> I don't really <laughs> recommend that. I would recommend eating 10 croissants yeah. and I'll puking be- after. Yeah, yeah. Plus, I'm in the movie. You're so. in the movie? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. I think it was like. That's why she's plugging. Out. Yeah, <laughs> you left out that, said that, left out that detail. <laughs> no, no, no. Said it. It's like total cameo. I'm in grad school, so I have literally my backpack on. Yeah. I have my stupid little like Patagonia zip up and my really baggy pants. Yeah, <laughs> like, just looking. Fucking G. Super G. Super G. <laughs> so ready, like, ready for any outcrop that I'm just, like, throws at you. Cruising down the hallway, like, do, 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 do. I don't say anything smart. <laughs> this is a me. rock. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. So yeah, that's um So I, I finished up at UT, okay. got recruited directly over to Anadarko, started drilling wells in the Marcellus, onshore explore or sorry, onshore development, doing all that kind of stuff. It was really fun, but um I I think I was one of the last geos to geo steer their own wells and also be a full time geologist. Mm-hmm. So I like didn't sleep for a while, which was very yeah. interesting. But then they pulled me from that to do onshore exploration. So I started in kind of the Appalachian Basin doing some more interesting uh, exploration stuff. And then they popped me in this onshore exploration group. And I popped around and looked at like almost almost every basin with the exception of a few like pretty big basins in mm-hmm. the U.S. So it's a very, very good opportunity. Yeah. The problem was you don't get to do anything. I mean, sure, I can explore all day long. But until I go drill one of those wells, mm-hmm. like – what am I fucking doing? Yeah. I mean, I'm like making shit up basically. Yeah. <laughs> but I did learn the art of you gain a all the, story. You gain all the experience yes. from doing, right? Yes, but exactly. Yeah. 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 So so eventually I sort of got like, I don't know, a little disenfranchised with that and decided mm-hmm. that I would hop to private equity. So then I went over to a group and was drilling some horizontal wells in when the When did you go from Anadarko to private equity? Um, what year was 2017. that? 2017. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I worked for a couple NCAP back groups for um, a couple years. I mean, that's a whole other story. I can't even say most of the things that happened yeah. on this podcast. I was like, if you go to private equity backed <laughs> operators in 2017, I mean, that was when it was Dude. becoming pretty clear, like, hey, this model's broken. Yeah. Right? Oh, so not hard. only that, but like the characters that I ran across, like yeah. talk yeah. about that. I mean, yeah. I could write a book. You, I think it was you posted something. We should get you and Chuck on a podcast just talking oh shit about God. private equity. I'm happy. Yes, <laughs> me too. I mean, I'm not allowed to say I'm happy to do that, but I'd be happy yeah. to do that. Technically, I have signed paperwork. That yeah. yeah, yeah. We'll have it a, a secret password <laughs> podcast. But um, yeah, that was interesting. So I started mapping the PRB while I was at my second company. We had raised $400 million to go drill unconventional wells somewhere. This was back in the day when they would give you GNA. Yeah. And you could just, go do whatever yeah. the fuck you want. Then you could want. go find an ass. Blank yeah. slate. Don't yeah. even know what they're well, doing yet. What a life. A terrible idea, it's but it was fun. Wild. <laughs> so I started mapping the PRB, found some really cool assets. We were ready to rock and roll on one. And then my former CEO cut the bid in half. And so we didn't get it. Mm-hmm. So after that, they kind of pivoted and looked back. They were looking in the Permian and the Delaware Basin under the potash and they were saying that the <laughs> the acreage was going to be like forty thousand dollars an acre and they wanted to go buy it and of course that didn't happen because yeah. that's ridiculous and no one should do that so yeah. 
I left and I was uh, unemployed for about a month, which was basically torture. I don't do well unemployed. Mm-hmm. I like gardened and I was like, what am I doing? <laughs> My <laughs> grass is looking this. really good. Yeah, <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> so I started a consulting group. And I did some teaching and I helped the guys over at Premier Oilfield Services learn how to correlate logs and make maps and stuff like that. Yeah. I have deep ties with all those guys. My brother actually works for Premier now. He's okay. their um, head carbonate guy and does all their core work. So it was fun to go over there and help out. But in the meantime, I got a call from another private equity group saying, we need a geologist. Do you want to come help out? And I kind of was like, yeah, sure, whatever. I'll come talk to you guys. And I talked to him a little bit about the Powder River area that I wanted to look, and they invited me back, and I thought, okay, this is a pretty good opportunity. Let's see what happens. And a couple weeks later, we were looking at term sheets, and we were blowing and going, and so I hired a team, and we then I started a company. Yeah. <laughs> but it was great. They were really supportive. You know, um, this is Juniper Capital here in Houston. Mm-hmm. Really, really supportive of me and really helpful. And, That's you awesome. know, I, I do know my shit. Like, I'm a good geologist. But yeah. It, they really took, you know, um, they took a chance on me and I really appreciated it. It was a really good opportunity. Yeah. So sure. I ran that for a couple years. Um, and then, of course, the administration changed and our acreage was 98 percent federal. Oh, and so, you know, thinking about that and talking to those guys about it, it was just like, oh, man, this is tough. What are we going to do? So and we'd only drilled one well an exploration well and we were teed up to drill another one which i think they're actually completing like this week so oh, okay, i'm excited cool. to hear how see how it goes yeah well yeah. is yeah <laughs> see if the thesis proved <laughs> out yes exactly yeah. the first one was a big challenge so there's a lot of uh hair on that one but yeah. this new one hopefully will be really good um and so yeah once the administration changed i really had a hard time thinking about sticking around and, and i'm i'm an explorationist i like deals yeah. I don't want to do development again. Yeah. I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> no, thank you. Yeah. So I started thinking about transitioning and I had run across the Energy Funders guys a little bit before that and maybe a couple years. The principles, Energy Funders actually was purchased about a year ago by mm-hmm. a group called Paleo Resources. It's a private or sorry, publicly traded um, company on the Toronto Stock Exchange. Okay. And it's owned by primarily a couple of old school oil and gas guys who have really wonderful assets. And they had reached out to me a number of years ago just out of curiosity. I get a lot of people who just wonder, like, what's this <laughs> What's this geologist chick doing? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I am a token. It's fine. I'm yeah. comfortable with that. <laughs> but these guys originally reached out because they were like, wait, what? A young female geoscientist is running a private equity-backed portfolio yeah. company doing exploration. Yeah. So I developed a really good friendship with these guys. And once they purchased energy funders, we started talking about it. And they called around the same time. The former CEO had left and they said, hey, we'd like to recruit you over here. What is, what's it going to take? You know, what are you ready? And I was like, yeah, I mean, let's talk about it. But, you know, it's tough to look at a waterfall <laughs> when your administration doesn't support what you're doing. So, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so I made the jump at that time and Mark. we've been blowing and going ever since. Pulled Jeff mm-hmm. in a couple months ago. And yeah, so Jeff, yeah. let's talk about your background a little bit because you told me uh, you're president at Sipes. Is that is that correct? Yeah, sipeshouston.org. Okay, cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, well, so before that, you'd mentioned something. You said that it takes uh, a lot of brain power because there's always problems yeah. mm-hmm. that you can solve them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It takes a good team. Yeah. And that's why I'm really happy about energy funders because we, mm-hmm. I think our group and our experience, we see the problems yeah. in oil yeah. and gas and investing in oil and gas. Mm-hmm. Uh, the brain power here, obviously. Laura. Oh. Um, <laughs> Thank you. What about you? Um, uh, well, I guess myself since she uh, brought me on. <laughs> That's right. But we have a great team. Uh, Ross Hendricks, um, uh, Virginia. Um, uh, she goes by Ginny. Uh, Light and our, our entire group uh, brings something unique. We all have mm-hmm. many years of experience either it's working like for companies. It's like the island of misfit toys. Mm-hmm. We're all sort of like a little off for yeah. a normal role, but we work really, really, really well, well together. together. There's no HR department, yeah. in other words. That's how uh, I'm HR. That's, that's how why it's walk dangerous. That's why. Yeah. I'm uh, HR too. It's like you got a complaint, like, turn around my chair, it's like, what's yeah. your problem? My my problem is you put the most offensive person in as HR. Oops. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's never a problem. Makes with it them. fun though. It is. It's fun. Uh, our team calls are always exciting. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think digital wall cutters is very similar. Yeah. Sounds like it. For sure. Yeah. Most crude people we have on our team are all the women. Yeah, exactly. 
Yeah. Last talked time. about what would happen if I went to jail the other day. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, there was that conversation, which we had to stop halfway through. I was like, let's get no, back no, on track. We're, we're done. Got to get on track. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, it sounded like you're a geologist by trade or by background. I got my degree in geology. Okay, cool. And then um, I've worked for a few conventional only oil and gas exploration companies. And we made uh, Idaho the 35th producing state. I worked with Professor Meredith Spencer Wood at Boise State doing field work and getting that up. We drilled the first commercial wells and built a pipeline. That was probably the coolest thing any geologist could do out of school. Yeah. And I want to like mention, Jeff told me this story uh, last night or the night before about when he was actually doing real field work, mapping in the field to figure out what the dip of the beds was to figure out like where they should go drill. That's pretty like, cool. Like, nobody yeah. gets to do that anymore. That's amazing. You, know, you have like two counties, a huge area. We have an yeah. entire basin to ourselves. We leased the entire basin. We had drilled some wells and uh, you have no sign. You have a few 2D lines, but they're, you know, miles and miles and miles apart. Yeah. But only maybe 30 wells in the entire basin. So you can't really make a good cross section. You had to go and, and do what we did in field work, which when you're in field work, your professors say, you're never going to need to do this. And then you did like, it. And then it's I actually so did it. I was cool. like, I was like, I pulled out my old books. I was like, oh shit. Yeah, I've never had it. And I'm with like this, you know, Professor Maris, like but big you know, deal. I'm like, like you know, I'm trying to. Uh, I know think what about I'm doing. that a lot too, it. and just kind of like the talent gap because you spend, uh, you know, let's call it ten years in shale. Yeah. Everyone tells it as, oh, it's a manufacturing process. You know, like yeah, you don't really shale's need just a mining. Ton. You don't need a yeah. ton of geology experience, right? And you you lose that knowledge in the industry of yeah. being able to go out there and do that field work. And find and, you know, you're like mapping while you're out there. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. that's a skill set in oh, itself. Sure. And you, you, it's lost. you, yeah, you lose that. You know, there's probably an entire generation of yeah. uh, professionals that don't know how to do that. I that's, mean, that's part of why I brought Jeff in was because my, my background has been unconventionals. Mm -hmm. And then I guess doing whatever I'm doing, janitorial work, basically, mm -hmm. being the CEO, yeah. whatever you want to call it, yeah. everything else. And Jeff has this deep uh, well of, pun intended, experience, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> like doing <laughs> actual mapping and finding prospects and building them. Like, yeah. I've done a little bit of that, but not to the extent he has. It's amazing. And so a lot of the stuff that we look at is more conventional vertical, you know, either behind Piper or new drills, PUDs and PDP. Mm -hmm. And Jeff's done all of that. And I've had some experience, but like, not like that. Yeah. I it's mean, you guys cool. talked about, you know, energy funders going through an acquisition and mm -hmm. problem with the previous team. The founding team was, was a bunch of guys that had no, they had no oil and gas experience Correct. at all. Like they didn't come from the industry. And right. so how can you, you um, you know, you need a, a team that has. In this industry, you have to have experience. You have to yeah. have yeah. domain expertise. You have to, you have have to be out expertise. there. You have to know yeah. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And those guys did a really good job um, getting the energy funder's name out there mm -hmm. and raising mm -hmm. a certain amount of money. I don't think, um, well, the biggest difference is we do have that team of experience, but yeah. also our, our idea of what the fund should be is very different. They were drilling much riskier wells with extremely high potential, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. It's a whole different mm -hmm. business model. Mm -hmm. Ours is very low risk. Mm -hmm. We're not drilling what we call wildcats. We're drilling yeah, so like let, what Laura okay. said. Let's let's great transition and mm -hmm. let's start talking about the business model and yeah. how you guys think about the fractionalization of mm -hmm. oil and gas assets. So to kind of set the uh, set the stage here, you know, energy funders back in the day, essentially what they would do is they would mm -hmm. open up an LP um, mm -hmm. and they would take a two hundred thousand dollar allocation mm -hmm. in a well. So you know, say that it was a conventional well, cost a million dollars to drill and complete. They'd carve out two hundred thousand of that, and mm -hmm. they would um, sell units in that. You know, Correct. Uh, yeah. for as small as five thousand dollars, right? Mm -hmm. And so you could have, you know, call it a thousand, you know, thousand people in there, mm -hmm. and then boom, they'd wrap that up into yeah. a, a limited partnership, and then you know they have a series of fifty of those, mm -hmm. whatever it may be. But 39. it was on nine. Thirty nine. <laughs> there you go. I was close. Yeah. So. <laughs> And that was on an individual well basis. And right. like you said, high risk prospects. Right. So, you know, if you're an investor, say that you had $10 million that you wanted to allocate. Um, it's like Send you needed them my way. Yeah. You needed, <laughs> yeah, you needed to spread that across. Yeah. Like you needed to build your own portfolio of wells, yeah. right? right? To make sure that you were diversified. I haven't talked to you guys in depth about mm -hmm. how y'all think about the model. So let's kind of dive into that because I've sure. seen you talking about kind of more of this ETF index yep. fund exactly. type That's concept. So let's talk about how that actually, 
how that actually works. Yeah, yeah. We want to decrease concentration risk. You know, every time you invest, number one, in a wildcat well and number two, in a one-off well, your concentration risk is ridiculous. Like your risk profile for that specific event is just through the roof. I mean, typically, I think statistically, it's a 30% 30 chance in a wildcat well of actually hitting oil. Mm -hmm. That doesn't even take into account economic quantities. So I would say that the hit rate of the previous team was about statistically right. Mm -hmm. But that also means that your investors don't make any money. And we're running a fiduciary company that needs to return to our investors. Mm -hmm. There's no industry as risky as oil and gas exploration. Yeah, Mm -hmm. there just isn't. And, you know, New York can never figure out how we put money in a hole and maybe it never comes back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And New York mm-hmm. only came into our, and when I say New York, I mean like Wall Street. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They came in when we started drilling horizontals. Like, oh, well, they, do, they eliminated the risk of a drilling yeah, hole. Yeah, exactly. The manufacturing, now, the manufacturing now, process. Oh, they can't, oh we have to, you yeah. can't make money. So, yeah, like, yeah, a lot of those exactly. are uneconomic wells. Even though they find something, it's not economic if you can't get your money back plus. So, yeah. mm-hmm. um, what we want to do is when we were creating this, we looked at what would we want to invest in? Like mm-hmm. personally. And if you're going into a fund, you want, like you said, spread your, your risk dollars over as many outings as possible. Mm-hmm. And we want it to be um, low risk, not just are we going to find something like that's why we said PUDs, uh, but also technically low risk. Mm-hmm. You know, we're not drilling horizontal wells. We're not drilling giant deviations. We're not drilling. Well, hold on. Really, we could really, if we wanted we, we to. We could, but okay. we, when we look at, <laughs> we, when we look at, um, technical risk it's right. like are we drilling really deep wildcats that you know a lot of pipe setters like what could go wrong right i always want to ask that when we are going to invest in a project like what are all the avenues that could mm-hmm. go wrong and the other thing is that we currently are only investing with people we already have relationships with and understand our very high quality operators because mm-hmm. of course one of the biggest risks like jeff is alluding yeah. to is operational risk and one of the biggest risks in that risk is who is the operator do they know what they do they're doing yeah. I mean, I hate to say this, but we were tying up some lawsuits earlier this year when I came on board because of poor operators. And, yeah. you know, I'm unwilling to partner with people who I don't have either a very solid understanding of their track record or know personally because of that. Yeah. Right. Not only are they good at operating, but are they trustworthy? Yes, right. exactly. Because you have the whole AFE oh, issue yeah. and, and making sure. Because the geologic else. risk is just part of it. Getting yeah. to yeah. it is hard to. Yeah. yeah. And the operator has to be sound. And that's yeah. why you hear that a lot. Who's the operator? Yeah. yeah, exactly. And is it turnkey or mm-hmm. the operator mm-hmm. takes some too? Are you know, is there a scan in the game? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you have a lot of those different avenues you need to kind of figure out before you feel very confident in drilling something. Yeah. yeah. So are you guys going to be still focused on conventional assets within these? So or- for the time being, we're focused on conventionals because there are so many projects available and they all have very superior economics. Yeah. Um, I personally would like to go after some horizontals yeah. that are still more conventional. We'll call them pseudo conventional. Yeah, they're just horizontals and conventional. Yeah, you know fields. Are, but, are are you guys thinking all new drills? Are you so it's a putting PDP fund. in there? Right now, the way we're structuring it, so like you said, it's sort of mutual fund style. We're putting hopefully somewhere on the order of ten to fifteen working in, ten to fifteen wells. We're buying working interest, so a chunk of each well. And what we'd like to do is have a blend. We have two funds, uh, one limited partnership and one general partnership. And in the limited partnership, we're heavily weighting it t- toward PDP. Yeah. But we're getting our PDP at PV15. So, you know, we are basically guaranteeing 15% IRR, right? Mm-hmm. And there's, I threw some PUDs in there the other day. We bought a PUD we're going to put in because, you know, you want a little bit of the upside. And I felt like that PUD was particularly good and yeah. low risk. Yeah. So we're mm-hmm. allocating a little bit of PUD to that. And then... And the GP, we're heavily weighting it toward the PUDs. Um, and that's primarily because in the general partnership, um, 70 to 80% of the cost is intangible drilling costs, which are tax deductible against your active income. These are all things I just learned mm-hmm. and wish I'd known for a really long time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not that I could have participated, yeah. which is the point of energy funders. Yeah. But we're heavily weighting that one with PUDs right now to make sure that our investors are happy with their tax tax benefits too. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. mean, when you look at new drills, that's where a lot mm-hmm. of the uh, IDCs are. Right. Oh, yeah. You, know, you get the tax breaks. How do you guys think about the working interest relationship? So essentially, you know, to kind of um, provide some clarity for anyone that's listening, you have an operator, you have the uh, energy funders fund or platform, mm-hmm. and then you have the investors. So investors right. are investing in the fund. You guys are mm-hmm. you know, distributing the cash, taking in the cash. What about cash calls on mm-hmm. working interests? How do you guys think about that? Um, you yeah. know, Laura, you made a comment that you guys are structuring this to where you can kind of make it a product that's like, Hey, you know, you invest in this and you get a 
percent RR. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, how do y'all handle the cash calls and the flow of capital mm-hmm. the other way? You know, it, it's easy to understand. Okay, oils produce, it makes money, it goes to energy funders, yeah. right. you guys distribute. But what happens when you know a well needs a two hundred thousand dollar workover? Have y'all mm-hmm. like really thought through that or yeah. handled yeah, that? Yeah, we have a model for that. So there's two things that happen. One, the LP doesn't get cash called. The GP gets cash called. Okay. And so if you are invested in the general partnership, it's actually set up. We have a really fabulous SEC attorney who set it up as a GP comma LLC. So the way it works is that if there is a cash call, which again is a statistical thing, and I've looked at all the numbers to see like what's the average oh, yeah. cash yeah, call. Yeah, you can start going mm-hmm. back and yeah. you know, kind of stress testing honing in on that stress test. Like, yeah. right? mm-hmm. what, what's the and chances? so technically you would pay your proportionate share of your of our proportionate share of said cash call. So, you know, let's say it's a $200,000 work over um, and we own 50% of the well and then the investor owns 10% of that. That's yeah. pretty nominal. Yeah. And statistically, we are trying to make sure that we're not doing wells that we're going to need work overs in the GP, right? Yeah. Like those new drills. The plan is we have a reinvestment model. We want to start to monetize the wells after two to three years right. based off of um, commodity cycles and all kinds of other things. So we've got sort of a strategy built in to kind of protect our investors as much as possible. Mm-hmm. Also, you know, we've got insurance out the wazoo, like Way too much insurance, but yeah, it's good. I, I think that's <laughs> a good thing. Uh-huh. Yeah, 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 for sure. Mm-hmm. So for you guys, uh, you know, it, it seems pretty clear understanding on the oil and gas assets. Mm-hmm. But Laura, I've seen you like really involved <laughs> in the Bitcoin. There we go. Bitcoin mining. Oh, yeah. yeah. So um, you know, this is a space I've been involved in for yeah. four years now, mm-hmm. and super interesting to me. What are you guys thinking on? Bitcoin mining side, you know, yeah. I, I think that I wholeheartedly believe that Bitcoin mining is the next shell revolution, oh, for sure. right? Mm-hmm. And a lot of people, th- you know, I just went on a Twitter rant yesterday about this. I one. saw it. Yeah. I and, liked it. <laughs> you know, a lot of people, when they think about Bitcoin mining, they think like, oh, it's a great ESG solution for stranded mm-hmm. assets or flooded gas. I'm like, yeah. fuck no, it's great for taking off the pipeline. Yep. Buying it for six dollars yeah. in MCF yeah. and arbing it for thirty dollars uh-huh. yes. in MCF. Exactly. Yeah. So it's a midstream thing. Yeah. Right? Yep. It's, so, this is a digital pipeline. We're yep. putting yeah. our gas into a digital pipeline. So I became interested in Bitcoin probably about five years ago. Um we put a mine on my exploration well up in the PRB. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was run by a company and I was displeased with the lack of revenue share. Um it really ticked me off and then some other things that happened. So and even prior to that, I had talked to an old buddy from college about building our own mine on the on the well site, and it was very unpopular with my private equity crew. Private equity, you don't, you, stay you don't in give your a lot lane. of flexibility. Yeah, they private want you equities, to do one thing. Not known for it. being very creative people. It's like, right. yeah. you know, go talk to private equity yeah. right now about b- mining Bitcoin and they don't get it. It's they like, dude, it's yeah. the same thing as stripping liquids. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Like, yeah. Exactly. It's yeah, just it's, arbitrage. Yeah. yeah. So I tried to do it a while ago and then had it in the back of my mind the whole time I was talking to the energy funders guys because I knew how many stranded gas wells there are out there. And it's obviously just extremely lucrative, especially at this point. Before, you know, a couple of years ago when I was looking at it, I was like, eh, is this really that good? But mm-hmm. became more and more convinced over time. And obviously I mentioned um, Justin and Ryan before. Those are my former business partners as mm-hmm. well. And we would talk internally about it all the time. And so they left we to go do Justin their thing. We just had Justin and Ryan on the show. No, oh, good. We, nice. we should have came in the Oh man, it. no, it would have been a total just shit talk. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds fun. That sounds yeah, entertaining. Yeah, it's it great would content. Have been I want to listen, I wanna listen to that. <laughs> oh, those guys. I'm so proud of them. I'm really happy yeah. that they're doing so well. It's, yeah. it's good. I saw they're putting another 40 uh, petahash on their Wyoming site. Yeah, yeah my, it's good. My boy saw that picture and he's asking how much Bitcoin it can mine. And 
So Amazing. I hit them up and I'm gonna take awesome. them up there to that mine sometime cool. so you can yeah, see it's it. Good. Oh, yeah. They're putting a place down in Texas. They're building. Yeah, they're working here. on some Texas locations yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, they're they're doing great. I'm glad that we all kind of get to dabble in Bitcoin because we were all so enthusiastic about it. Yeah. So what we're doing is taking a lot of these older stranded gas wells that are actually owned by our parent company and they're contributing the well bore and we're building we're raising funding to go build the, the mines. mines yeah yep. okay so let's so we're talk doing about an interesting how, split yeah there. let's talk about how this works yeah. so um for that if i'm an investor mm -hmm. and i want to invest in that i'm investing in the mine yeah, I mean, technically, you're investing in the whole verticalized package. The okay, well's so, already been drilled, so yeah, I guess. Okay, so okay, so it's are we? Let's just say that you know there's a two million dollar offering mm -hmm. on energy funders. Does that include the underlying gas asset itself? No. Okay. Just mm -hmm. the mine. So just the, mine, the mine, yeah. mine is buying gas from the mm -hmm. operator. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. So me as an investor. When I'm investing, am I investing in that revenue share from, you know, are we, are we selling the Bitcoin? It's kind of like a drill co. We've kind of structured it like a drill co. Basically, okay. well, I guess maybe it's not like a drill co. They're contributing the well and the gas. Yeah. We're buying, technically buying the gas at a very, very low rate, mm -hmm. right? And then we build the mine and we own the mine and they, they share the mine with us. So I think it's like, uh. 30%, 60% until payout, and then it reverts to 50 50. Okay. All yeah. right. So there's a threshold that it hits. Yep. And yep. Flips. Okay. Yep. Exactly. What's the plan? I So it's funny that you said that you were getting frustrated with the revenue share split yeah. with it because I've talked to a lot of Chinese miners. Oh, my gosh. I have a story about that from this week. Right, cool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. And I don't think that the JV model works. No. Like, I don't think that it, it I, I don't think that that's going to work because there's misaligned incentives. Yes. And so that, I think that there was a window for these big mining companies yeah. to come partner with mm -hmm. um, EMPs. But now I'm dead set on, hey, you got to own, you got to own the you have to vertical own it. stack. You yeah. have I'm even, to own the I'm even so stack. much, I'm like, dude, like everyone talks about, Mineral owners, mineral owners, fuck them. We're going to go buy the minerals too. Yes, like exactly. we're just going to cut yeah, them out. We don't need them. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. I can't I buy this from you. Yeah. It's totally fine. Yeah. So I think I've that's been... the only way that it can operate. And yeah. so it's good to hear that you guys are going that route. Yeah. So poor Jeff has heard me talk about the misalignment between Bitcoiners and oil and gas people for weeks now because I've been trying to find vendors. I've been trying to do all this stuff. <laughs> since I started at Energy Funders several months ago, and actually even before that, I was talking to the our principals about it. And first of all, getting people of a certain age on board with Bitcoin. It's boomers. <laughs> fucking boomers, yeah. man. It's real. <laughs> yeah. So I was very proud of myself when I got buy-in. So that was step one. Like, yeah. get principals over the hurdle. Step two was now figure out who to go talk to, how to get the box. Do I need an immersion mine? Where do I get miners, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Meanwhile, China was shutting all the Bitcoin miners down. Mm -hmm. So I started talking to people and some of these Chinese miners want um, <laughs> two cents per kilowatt hour. Yeah. That's what their expectation is. Yeah. I can't make money on two cents a kilowatt hour. There's no fucking way we're doing that. Well, no. So here's the problem. They hear free gas. Yeah. And like it doesn't yeah. cost any, dude, nothing mm -hmm. in life. It doesn't cost anything. No. You right. do not extract hydrocarbons from the ground no. for free. Right. And everybody who's involved in Bitcoin thinks Bitcoin's the most important and the most valuable. And everybody who's in oil and gas thinks <laughs> oil and gas is the most important and most valuable. And there's this detente happening where, you know, we'll go to like the meetup and stuff like that. I've talked to half of those people. We can't get a deal done because they think their shit yep. is more important than no, my 100%. shit. No, 100%. Yeah. And the thing. vertical is literally the only way. That's why we're and building to be honest, our own minds. Look, to be honest, like I understand both sides of this. Mm -hmm. And the oil and gas guys are right. Yeah. Oil and gas wells are a thousand times more complex mm -hmm. than plugging in computers and mm -hmm. oh, maintaining totally. them. I don't give a fuck what you say. Yeah. That's the, like, I mean, oil and gas is one well, of the, the most Bitcoin impressive feats of physics yes. yeah. over the last hundred years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We were right? just talking about that earlier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, that's, that's the thing is like, you know, work with Chinese miners and be like, like, oh, I thought we could get three, three no. cents no. per kilowatt. And I'm like, yeah, look, they can do that, but then they're not making any money. And then, yeah. You want them to put up the capex for the generators too, like who put who buys misaligned yes. yeah. yeah. misaligned, misaligned, yeah. yeah. And then another variable to that as well is what is the end goal for the miner? I've mm -hmm. talked to, oh yeah, I'm not gonna say who it is, mm -hmm. large bank, 
and they're deploying a ton of miners. They want to be the bank of the future. They're accumulating <laughs> Bitcoin. They're like, yep. we want to hold as much Bitcoin on our balance sheet as mm-hmm, possible. Mm-hmm. So they're not ARBing. They don't give mm-hmm. a shit about the yeah. value. Yeah. Then you have some that are just looking at it as a cash arbitrage. Hey, we can get $5 MCF gas. Right. We can mine, convert it, net back $30 in MCF. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so also that depend that changes the business model too. Is, yeah. Hey, are you looking just to float cash or do you want to actually hold Bitcoin, Bitcoin on the on balance sheet right. too? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Bitcoin's so, very volatile. I mean, yeah. It's very yeah. risky. Yeah, we just um, sent an email to but one it's of our investors about that. But it's programmed that. to go up over time. Exactly, right. as yeah. opposed to oil and gas, which, whoops. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah. that's it, it depends on like what your belief is. Do you believe right. Bitcoin is going to a million dollars per Bitcoin, mm-hmm. or do you just believe that, hey, there's an opportunity for us to sit here and mine yeah. and mm-hmm. get additional cash? I love that our team is comprised of one hodler <laughs> and like everybody else is like laura shut up we don't care <laughs> no, i'm a hot I've, I've been buying bitcoins since yeah boy thousand dollars uh oh, really? usd oh, i yeah. sold a bunch at six hundred yeah. dollars and, and so, i want to jump off a cliff <laughs> cost average in over time yeah and it works and yeah. you know i here's another thing too i'm gonna go on a little side tangent go. rant here mm. for anyone that's listening to this because there are a lot of people in oil and gas fast forward yeah, <laughs> a lot of people in oil and gas that are dismiss- dismissive of Bitcoin. Yeah, and one thing that I think that a lot of people they they call it a fake currency. Oh, great, we're gonna we're gonna convert the U.S.'s energy into mm-hmm. a fake currency. One trillion dollar market cap. It's not fake. right. It's not bigger fake. than Facebook. Mm-hmm. Um, second, people think of it as a currency, and they don't look at it as an evolution of the internet. Bitcoin is a protocol. And just like no one gives a shit about the protocols of the internet. They don't care about IP, HTTP. They care about, I type in Google, I can search something, yes. and I get something. No one knows how the internet was built. Much like people, like, I don't know if y'all saw or not, but on Twitter, you can, the Bitcoin uh, Lightning Network is now integrated into Twitter. Yeah. I can send a dollar to anyone across the world instantly for no money. I can't wait to tell y'all about our CFT plans. We're taking that. over. That. We're taking over the world. I don't know if I want to hear y'all shit. <laughs> oh, no, it's so good. <laughs> That's super secret stuff, Laura. Yeah, I know. No, it won't be for long. Wild, wild bunch over there. Um, <laughs> so, anyways, uh, you know, people they got to get over that hump first mm-hmm. of thinking that. But what's interesting to me is that oil and gas guys are some of the most capitalistic people ever. Right. So hey, right. forget forget Bitcoin, forget blockchain. Like you don't have to believe in it. Thirty dollars in MCF compared to six dollars in exactly. MCF. That's all right. you need to that's, know. That's how the rest of our team is. That's yeah. exactly mm-hmm. right. And yeah. I think once we can get over that hump, people there will be more mass adoption. There will be units being deployed all over the U.S. In fact, I we're you know we're already having trouble getting some some of our stuff. Because, well, I think we're already at that oh, inflection yeah. point. We are. Oh, when you see sure. Conoco doing it up in the Bakken, when you see EOG yeah. doing yeah. it in New Mexico, these yeah. aren't small shitty no. operators. No. I mean. Yeah. These are prime time operators. When I posted that, I posted Devin? a slide. Yeah, Devin. Devin's I posted a slide it? the other day of Conoco doing it. I had two people um, from Wall Street mm-hmm. hit me up like, hey, it's like, is this, is yeah. this real? I'm like, yeah, here's the yeah. deck. Like, they're yeah, doing it's it. Crazy. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm glad. I'm glad that's happening. I'm sort of not glad though, because I wish I'd actually been able to do this six months ago when I was trying to do it the first time. But I mean, that, that takes us to the raising money mm-hmm. thing. Like, Getting capital in the door is the number one most important thing right now. And mm-hmm. so the Bitcoin mines are being included in this current fund that we're raising. Mm, gotcha. So the fund is a blended fund between oil and gas projects and Bitcoin mines. Okay, These cool. natural gas powered Bitcoin cool. mines. How okay, so let's talk about the um details of the fund. Mm-hmm. Is there a set price on the fund? You know, a total amount we're raised. aiming for twenty five million. Okay, so twenty five million mm-hmm. um accredited investors only. Correct. Right. What's a minimum investment? Five thousand dollars. So five thousand dollars. So yeah. five thousand bucks, you can get in on this. Which um, is, let me make a point real quick here. Yeah. That's cheaper than you can buy an ASIC on Compass to go do your own mining. Yeah. So like. Yeah, I mean, if you're I, looking to buy an S nineteen Pro, if you're really point, interested in Bitcoin, yeah, like, this is the best avenue. Yeah. To expose your portfolio, your mm-hmm. your own wallet. To Bitcoin, we're mining it for cheaper than you can buy it. Somewhere right. Else. That, yeah. that and your entry level is so low. Uh-huh. Yeah. And. Bitcoin is designed to be for the people. This is what I keep getting on a soapbox about. It's designed to be for the people. A lot of people are holding Bitcoin. Individuals are holding a lot of Bitcoin 
to preserve their own wealth. Mm -hmm. I want to make it so, just like we're doing for oil and gas, this shit's democratized. I want anybody yeah. to be able to come yep. out here, pay five thousand dollars, and get the benefit of mining Bitcoin at thirty thousand mm -hmm. dollars a coin. Yeah, like, yeah, let's do I, it the right um, way. Yeah, like I, I'm a nerd, mm -hmm. so I like get me too. Yeah. God bless you. Yeah. Rock liquor. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're more of a nerd than I am. <laughs> yeah, uh, one hundred percent. Like I get, I, I get really excited about the idea of building on a microgrid at my house. So totally. Solar plus battery and that gas backup, but mm -hmm. I'm looking at okay. If I got this uh, solar, I got a solar guy for you. Cool. Mm -hmm. Hook me up. Yeah, mm -hmm. if I got the solar array, you know, one, I'll pay a premium to have stability in my power because I do believe Texas is going to oh, have more screwed. more grid issues yes. in the coming years. I totally for sure. Agree. So okay, preparing for that. But now, what if I can make it economic? If I go get two ASICs, yep. and I start mining Bitcoin, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. and it pays and even, for itself. Yeah, yeah, and it pays for itself. Even if it didn't pay for itself today. I'm a I'm a hodler. Yeah. Yeah. So hey, I don't give a shit what I'm paying today. Yeah. I just want to accumulate as much Bitcoin as I can on my balance sheet right. over exactly. over time. And also, I don't even think about Bitcoin in terms of fiat. Like no. once I put a dollar into Bitcoin, it's now it's, Bitcoin. A, it's a Satoshi. Yeah. Yes. One Bitcoin equals one Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah. um I actually really think it's and, and this isn't just natural gas, you know, right there. It was distributed energy system through mm -hmm. solar. So right. now you look at a wind turbine farm mm -hmm. that hey maybe this doesn't make sense on paper in mm -hmm. terms of economics but now if we put miners out there yeah, right. and we have a way to create value out of that energy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now it enables that wind turbine farm to be able to get built i think the most important thing in that in terms of that because i've thought a lot about putting solar panels on top of our boxes mm -hmm. right for when there's downtime on the wall which there inevitably will be yeah we should have some other form of energy stored up but then we start to talk about batteries mm -hmm. batteries are the most important thing here because yeah. we need a better battery. Yeah. Like, and then now I'll start I mean, batteries, to talk about the batteries, mining. Tech, battery tech is the barrier it's, for renewables yes. right now, right? Yeah. yeah. Did you see? I so I made this tweet, and it was during uh, the hurricane in New Orleans mm -hmm. last month or two months ago, and I just saw a bunch of diesel and nat gas generators being sent down, yep. and I took mm -hmm. a shot at like renewables. I was like, I don't see any solar generators being right. sent. Yeah. And then this nonprofit popped up in my feed mm. that was sending solar generators oh, that's awesome. um, down in the, these big trailers with like mm. solar wings that come out. Mm -hmm. And I was like, hey, look, it's like, I was that's talking cool. shit. I was like, I'll come check it out. I'll help you guys set it up. I'll bring supplies. I want to learn about it. Yeah, and Tesla had also sent down a solar unit. And obviously, you know, when you talk about power density, like one, uh, you know, diesel or nat gas you know you can generate more power from mm -hmm. a smaller generator right but what's nice about solar is one it's replenishable right it so you're going. not having to put fuels into it but one thing that they really opened up my mind to was the battery topic because yeah. they're like even mm -hmm. if you're running a diesel generator mm -hmm. these generators want to be ran at 80 percent capacity mm -hmm. you should be using it to power up batteries, batteries. and then run off the batteries it'd That's be exactly so much right. more efficient on the generator and i was like oh shit i never thought about that like we even we yeah. don't need batteries just for solar and wind like even right. for fossil fuel everything. generators yeah like everything needs to have a battery. the problem is that right now but we need a better battery because yeah. mining for battery like this is one of the things I always get on my high horse about with my people, my friends who are into renewables. I'm like, okay, so you have your Tesla. That's great. Mm -hmm. Do you know the number one carbon output from start to finish of what it actually takes to build a battery and a Tesla? It's more than a, an internal combustion engine. Yeah. yeah. And number two, the mining process for rare earths is extremely toxic and damaging yeah, strip to mining the earth. Is it's terrible mining. for mm -hmm. the earth, right? And there's but, all kinds of, but so, Going Indentured back to servitude always finding too. solutions. You know, there's a startup that I'm really bullish on. I like mm -hmm. solutions that um, has they're, they're backed by um, lower carbon ventures, and mm -hmm. they've got this process that you run brine through these beads. I saw and that. And they extract so lithium. Cool. Yeah. And yeah. Chris Saka, billionaire, you know, he's like, it is the only technology that I've ever seen that does. 10,000 10, times faster than the current process. That's insane. So smaller yeah. footprint and, and weight. Way so, that's yeah. that's and, so and that's cool. where think, they're going to have to go. And right like, now, how much environmentalism brine, how much is brine like do we infancy. fucking produce in oil and gas? Oh my Billions God, so of barrels. And I'm yeah. just like, how much yeah. lithium could we extract yeah, out of that? And so I'm very bullish and optimistic Can on humans' ability. Can you send me a link to that? It's yeah. very curious. Yeah, yeah very absolutely. Curious about that. I'm, awesome. I'm very optimistic on humans' ability to figure, figure out figure problems. Out. Well, that's one of the biggest things that the environmental movement doesn't take into consideration with their 
you know, models, which I, are mostly all a lie because they don't take into account how progressive we've been as a species throughout time. Yeah. You know, how, how look at where we live right now. You yeah. know, we've made it through some incredible things that people can't even wrap their minds around. Yeah. From, you know, a long, long time ago. You and mean now in we're the swamp? Safer. Is that what you're referring <laughs> in the swamp. to? We live in a swamp. Yes. Okay, cool. Just so uh, in Houston. Yes. Um, but we're in a building in the swamp with air conditioning yeah. where I would die. Yeah. Um, but so I think environmentalism is at its infancy. Like you said earlier, it doesn't really take away any energy. We can't rely on it. It's it's not renewable, nor is it reliable. Mm-hmm. Um, batteries are, you know, going to need to change mm-hmm. and they're not better. It's a trade off. Like mm-hmm. the, it's not, you're not a moralist person or you're not a better person because you're choosing wind which is a complete joke or like solar you're not better you're just trading it off because Mm -hmm. it makes you feel better yeah like the reality is oil and gas has been the nicest and best thing to the earth and to people that we've ever found yeah Mm -hmm. um nuclear is probably the best option if you're a real environmentalist and actually care about the principles that's fine they hate nuclear too so they do (laughs) because it's because it because they because I don't think they profit from it. That's why. Yeah. I think yeah. most of the environmental movement is in a different yeah. direction. I was telling the uh, crowd at Namoga, I was mm-hmm. like, look, I was like, I'm bullish electric vehicles and it has nothing to do with the environment. I think they're a better product. And yeah. I think electric vehicles will be a better See, product. See, that's the right attitude. Yeah. I think it's, if you like a Tesla because you like it, that's great. But you're not a better person. You're not helping anybody. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. it's, it, you it's like it. I was talking to an engineer. Yeah. But, I mean, you guys probably know him. He's mm-hmm. running a Bitcoin mine for major. Everybody in Bitcoin company. knows each other. It's a very yeah. small world. But oh my gosh, him I know, and I were, ridiculous. He's at dinner with us the other night. Oh, we're talking because yeah, yeah. he's got a Tesla on on order. Oh, I think I made fun of him. Did you? I'm like, just Laura makes fun of everybody. Yeah, I do. Just That's to be true. Clear. I love Tesla. I'm agnostic. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'll care. make fun of anybody. But it anyways, matter. I think superior economics and technology always win. But mm-hmm. it is interesting to think about how Bitcoin plays a role in enabling mm-hmm. different types of energy assets that wouldn't have been yeah. profitable. I mean, it's, it's converting waste, yeah. Yeah. right? You're wasting into this some energy value. into yes. some, and it's not just economic value. It's, it's then life value for someone, right? Yeah. Like you can take that Bitcoin and eventually use the lightning network and go buy stuff. Yeah. You can exactly. tip people on fucking Twitter with your Bitcoin now. Come dude, on, hit me. Dude, you don't know how, <laughs> look, I tweeted out Jack, the founder of strike. I yeah. said, dude, I'm tired of fucking paying Payment processing fees yeah. for digital wall oh, I awful. saw that. I it saw kills that. Yeah. 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 It kills everybody. Dude, let's enable this for companies so that, yep. hey, if Energy Funders comes and buys some advertising, hey, send us Boop. send us money over the Lightning Network. Yeah. I'm tired of paying right. fees. Mm-hmm. To- some government will jump on that. Yeah. But for right now, it's yeah. great. Yeah. Fuck them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what, no, Fuck them. <laughs> no, like Elon Musk the other day, yes. someone who's talking about Starlink, and someone was at, I can't remember what the, te- it was a technical question, but it was asking about like, the permission to do it in countries that you know, yeah. don't and yeah, he's like they can it. shake their fists at the sky and i was like fuck yeah, yeah. like that's what I love. I love what he did to california yeah i love the democratization like just, of technology to where like yeah. china's tried to shut down bitcoin eight like eight I know, times I know. but that was the best thing that ever happened to bitcoin was when china outlawed it yeah that i think legitimized it yeah completely yeah like, and oh. america is not going to follow suit with china yeah mm-hmm. they're going to try to take advantage of the opportunity exactly. i would think if i was a betting guy in that sector I think yeah. that America is not going to want to say, "Oh, we do." We definitely want to distance ourselves from what know, China man. does. I think that I think that you give them too much credit. Also, I think that Who, the Chinese or the American and government, the American the government, Americans. probably. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Uh, they definitely are. The logic makes sense. Yeah. Not to be China. Yeah. Yeah. So okay, we're getting we're getting to how the, long has it been? We're, we're at almost an hour here. Wow. So who would listen getting, to something for an hour? I don't know, man. People do. <laughs> People do. Apparently like we've been doing, I don't, you know what I do now, listen to so. for an hour. Have you ever heard of energy crew podcast? The guy energy. named JP Morgan. <laughs> yeah. That's my favorite podcast. He's great, man. He's he going to love you. For that's that. my favorite. He's he going to love you for that. <laughs> so really moving into the Bitcoin mining space. Yeah. You know, I look at, I look at, like I said, Bitcoin mining as shell 2.0. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you bring up um, Justin and Ryan over mm-hmm. at Jai Energy. I mean, they don't consider themselves. I think it's pronounced J. No, it's, it's J. Is it J or is it J? Fuck, I asked him. I mean, I yeah. asked, no, what I did asked he him say? What? I, he told me it was J. Maybe it is J. Maybe no, they maybe changed I, it. No, maybe I messed pronounced up. it wrong. However, I said it on the podcast is the correct way because I asked him before and I made <laughs> sure I said it that way. Uh-huh. So maybe it is J and I keep yeah. saying J. It's definitely J. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to advise him on some branding. <laughs> you should. Name that, <laughs> Please do. 
I can't mispronounce digital wildcatters. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot. <laughs> so, um, but anyways, those guys refer to themselves as a Bitcoin mining company. They are, And they yeah. just happen to be oil and gas guys that own. It's totally different. Yeah. yeah. And so that mind, that mindset is the winning mindset. And mm-hmm. so really interesting, you know, I'm more bullish on the idea of, hey, democratize I want everybody to have this. Bitcoin mining operations because yep. like, I'm like oh, okay like I'd throw some money in and the verticalization sure. thing right yep. like the verticalization thing is so key like you said and yep. we have an opportunity to do it and we are first movers in the space yep. especially on the hey you can just come own part of this the fractional ownership of a mine mm-hmm. that's pretty fucking cool yeah yeah no that gets me like, way more excited this than is self high five over here five thousand everybody needs wealth. energy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, you with energy funders, you're at the beginning stages of like this Bitcoin and craze. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And I mean, craze in a good way, not like a necessarily a bubble, but you, there's a lot of risk to it. Yeah. But you know that, like you said earlier, the market cap and the, the availability and the different things that it can be used for. Um, now is the time to get involved with it. Yeah. yeah. You definitely don't want to wait. I love, five, how, 10 I love years. how you brought up the risk of Bitcoin because I've always said, I'm like, yeah, the. There's things no that I'm too much interested in are oil and Bitcoin. I, like, yeah. I like just I getting know. kicked in the nuts. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently. Like, apparently. Yeah. Well, yeah. and I mean, energyfunders.com is the only place where somebody, I mean, you have to be an accredited investor, but somebody can for come now. in for mm-hmm. now. That's somebody can thing. come in mm-hmm. and have exposure to oil, natural gas, which fuels the world, which demand will always go up. Mm-hmm. Prices do, do fluctuate, but it will always be needed. And currently in the next few years, the prices are only going up because mm-hmm. of the swing to environmentalism there's not a lot of drilling in america there's not a lot of product although the world needs it yeah um you see what's happening in california or germany Mm -hmm. um but that's what makes us we're the first mover that's what's exciting for us and to work here and and to be on part of this team and we all have the same vision and um we don't care so much about politics but we care a lot about how do we make a return for our investors yeah. and how do you make start? the model work right yeah, exactly that's how every business should yeah. operate right? so exactly. i, I want to take a moment to plug the future of energy funders because yeah. you know we've obviously the company has experienced a 100 percent turnover over the past year and it's it's effectively a startup it's right it's a mm-hmm. new company yeah. you were asking about models and yeah we've worked through most of those things i feel like so we're doing a couple new things um we are in the process right now of talking about if we want to keep the oil and gas fund together with the Bitcoin fund. Mm-hmm. I think uh, probably potentially before the end of the year, maybe next year, we're going to have two separate funds so you can pick your poison. Do you right. want to be a Bitcoin, you know, in Bitcoin uh, mining, off-grid natural gas Bitcoin mining, or do you want to do oil and gas, traditional oil and yeah, gas investing? And I mean, just my two cents, it probably makes it harder for you guys to um, raise capital when it you conflate the two does. ideas. Yes. So yeah, 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 yeah. No, we've identified mm-hmm. that as a big sticking yeah. point for our investors. And yeah. so we're working through, I just saw, I have an email from our attorney to see like what we can do about it. But for sure next year, we're going to split them out so that mm-hmm. on our website, you can click the box that says, I want to be a GP in oil and gas. I want to be a GP mm-hmm. in Bitcoin, or I want you to pre-blend the fund for me. Nice. So you yeah. can pick where your $5,000 cool. or $1 like million dollars even cooler goes. Is, like, everything is through the internet on your phone. I mean, you can invest, and we are developing an app We're and having everything. an app. That's the uh, other thing. You know, we want to make it as easy as possible. Yeah. You mm-hmm. know, every yeah. Robinhood made stock investing easy and, I guess, somewhat fun. Yeah. Uh, we want to make... Uh, it's crazy how know, good design and branding. It's oh, amazing. it's all along. Have yeah. you seen our new brand? I haven't. Oh man! Oh yeah, man! Yeah, new out. website, oh. new logo, new everything. Cool. All right. New. So on that note, yeah, where can people check you guys out? Energyfunders.com. Energyfunders. <laughs> awesome. Or check Instagram, us out. Twitter, LinkedIn. Someone awesome. told me I'm a LinkedIn influencer, so oh yeah, check out my LinkedIn. You got up to that status now. I, huh? last I don't night, think some... that's real. But <laughs> no, it no, is. Tell him a story. About last night, I met somebody for the first time, and he's like, "Oh, you work for Energy Funders?" Okay. He's like, is, "Oh, is that the company with uh, the female CEO?" I was like, "I pointed her." So yeah, and he like freaked out. He's like, I follow her on LinkedIn. <laughs> it was <What>? awesome. <laughs> it's crazy. Like, yeah. Exposure, what is life? Right? Leverage, <laughs> leverage for the generations before us was capital. Yeah. Whoever mm-hmm. had capital mm-hmm. controlled things. Content is the leverage of this generation. Totally. It's yeah. how someone like me, roughneck, yep. 1.6 high school GPA, goes to being able to have a name because yeah. I leverage content and right. the ROI on that is so high. Now people hence digital wildcatters. Hence digital wildcatters. Yeah. yeah. So no, it's been really interesting. It's, it's and good to hear. You yeah, know, it's work. It works. Like, yeah. uh, and that's not the first time that's happened. Well, it's definitely the first time someone's been like, "Oh, is that the chick CEO?" Like, that's a little <laughs> weird. But, but at Nape, I had never three. seen one of those before. <laughs> oh my god, what is it? 
<laughs> get her out of here. <laughs> she wasn't invited. No, but in Ape, I had a bunch of people come up and introduce themselves. And I love that. I love meeting people. I'm an extrovert. It's a yeah. problem for me, for sure. But it's such a strange thing to like put something out there and then have all this feedback come in. And it's it's really interesting. So. Yeah. That's cool. good. You're right, though. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Um, before we end the show, I became an Adderall influencer on Twitter inadvertently <laughs> because someone someone had tweeted about there's going to be a huge methamphetamine problem because all of these Silicon Valley startups have popped up where it's telemedicine and they prescribe you. And yeah, I've, I, saw I've, that. I have yeah. severe ADHD. I always have since I was a kid. And back then, I had to go through like these intense. Oh, yeah psychiatric evaluations uh -huh. to get prescribed and anyways i'm so busy now i was like oh dude i'm gonna call this place up and see it like 20 minute conversation i'm like oh yeah you know i get like, distracted Here you here's go. your prescription yeah that's crazy and so i like tweeted about that i had i sent the link to over 50 people and i was like man i should be getting a referral link this yeah for this. like a drug pain oh also we're gonna start doing now. a referral program on energy funders so tell oh, nice. all your buddies and we'll cut your fees Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah that's good. Be good. Cool. We're trying, oh, yeah. We just want to make it easy. We yeah. want everybody yeah. to, oh, and we're going to open a reggae fund in the next little bit. So Interesting. We'll that have to talk about that. you right. don't have to be accredited right. to invest in our Bitcoin mine. And I think we'll make it Bitcoin centric because I think For sure. that is really the I way think, of the future. I uh, think four years ago, I was the only person in oil and gas that even knew what reggae was. So, <laughs> Maybe. Uh, yeah, Probably, yeah, actually. Be it's been yeah. a lot yeah. of time Probably. thinking about reggae. So. Let's talk about it then. That sounds well, good. Um, all right. So, guys, if you're interested in in investing in oil and gas wells or investing in Bitcoin mines, go check out energyfunders.com. Uh, get a hold of Laura since she's an yeah. uh, influencer on LinkedIn. You can find her pretty easily now. And then my <laughs> man Jeff over here. So appreciate you guys coming on the show. Thanks this so was much. Fun. We appreciate it. Yeah, for sure. Guys, make sure you check out our newsletter, BDE, Big Digital Energy. It's on the website. You can go on digitalwallcounters.com. Is that what BDE stands for? Yeah, so it stands oh, for. Oh, I didn't know that. Big Digital Energy. <clears throat> Um, <laughs> so you find it on the website, check out, uh, Chuck and I are hosting the show Tuesday, 10 30 every week. It's live. Come in there, join the chat. We're going to have call in features soon. So we're about to take it up. Oh uh, my God. Take it up a notch. I'm so gonna troll you so hard. Keep someone there to troll us. That's fine. Come <laughs> yes. on there and do it. So, all right, guys, we'll catch you next week. Awesome.